In this chapter we'll be working on the bubble stitch but we'll be working back into the bubble stitch so this bit's about stitch placement and how to find those stitches without gaining any extra ones. Okay so um, we're now working on the right side of our work and I've just worked in a couple of the beginning row of row 38 so I thought it'd be not quite nice for us to just kind of look at where we are going to be working into the bobble stitches because I think this is where it gets a little bit confusing for a few so this is my method that you may come across different methods but this is my method of doing it and obviously bearing in mind that we have five DC living in this space so we know that we have to fill five DCSE um, single crochet, double crochet, wherever, whichever continent you're from. Um, but I think it's important to just look at um, the stitches. So and hopefully you can see it because white doesn't show up too brilliant on this camera. Um, as you can see, we have our one, two, three, four, four loops that we did. And obviously that includes the one that was attached here, but that doesn't matter. It's these four here. So they all come together here and they are brought together with this stitch here but obviously we're working into the, the right side now so it sits on a different side to where we want it to so where we're going to work into is here and that brings it all together so let's have a look at our stitches ahead and we can work out where we're going to work into so we have one two three four five we're going to work into these five here and then we're going to half treble into this space here so let's start well, actually, we're going to start here. We're going to actually start in this space here. So we can show you twice of how it's going to work. Again, realign your wool so that you're comfortable. Let me just lift my blanket up a little bit so it's not pulling on me. And yarn over. Go through those two stitches there. Look, can you see that? Yarn over again and go through all three. And then you can work straight into this space, this stitch head here. And yarn over and then go through all three. So we're just creating half double. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So we know we've done our five because we know that's what lives in there. And then we're going to go back through. So if you can see, you can see those loops there. But if you turn it over, you can see if you follow the line of stitch heads there, you can see that it's there okay there it is and just pull through and then you just wait for the next one and so on and so on so that's pretty much what you do with your double crochet um sorry with your bubble stitch when it comes to working back into it because what you don't want to do and i'll get there in a second oh, is be working into that one then that one and that one, because that means you've gained a stitch. So your row won't be correct. You need to make sure that your stitch placement is cor it correlates to this stitch here, because we're working above that, because otherwise the bubble won't come together, it won't sit nice. So just because we have multiple um, stitches within one space doesn't mean we add in extra stitches. So we need to make sure that we're only adding one per bubble. So if you do add it there, you don't add it there, basically. So it's one only. Remember to make ensure that you're thinking about the count that's in between and that you're not adding any extra there. So again, knowing that you did five, you make sure that you only have five correlating to the stitch above. And the same with the bubble. It only lives in one stitch space, so therefore only one stitch can live above it. So I hope that that makes sense and that you can kind of appreciate now how to work your bubbles and that you'll have a nice even rate. So you should have roughly 16 bubbles per row. Or per side um, again on the first um, on the video before sorry um, I said that um, you would be working 5 DC, DC in and then starting your bubbles I have corrected that it is 70 uh, sorry 8 DC so I have corrected it on the blog it actually does say on there that obviously the video was incorrect on the first one so just make sure that you're following it um as you were but you'll probably get you're going to get 16 bubbles so when you come to the end 
just finish off what's remaining. It will change here and there, um, unfortunately, but as long as you have 16, that's fine. Um, so there you go. Right, I'm going to crack on with the next four rows and we'll see you back here and we will be working on our moss stitch. Okay, so we are now working on the moss stitch. I have done all but four rows. I'm just finishing off this one. So just as a reminder, um, I'm going to skip this stitch here. I've got a chain above it, so the chain and the skip stitch correspond with one another. Then I'm going to go into here and do a double crochet, a UK double crochet or a US single crochet. Chain again and then let me just move that out of the way and then missing this stitch here and then going into the next one. So the chain that we create lives over the skip stitch and that's our moss stitch. So just in case you'd forgotten what we've already done in the previous videos, this is just a just bit of a reminder so you know um, what to do. So it's lovely and sunny here. Get some lovely light from our window. Let's just reel on my, my uh, fingers again. And the blanket's getting lovely and big now, so it's a little bit cumbersome to be working on. And after this moss stitch, we'll be working on our granny clusters because we have created our chain spaces using the moss stitch as our vehicle to doing so. Right, let me just get that through there. Lovely jubbly. Almost there. And then straight in. There we go, and it's just a case of cut you all, and then let's move that over there, and then and then and then put it all the way through. Right, so this will be the ladybird or the red for you guys, and with me it's uh, the cupid. So the next colourway that we have, let me just look at the written pattern as a reminder. So we have pink next. And we're going to work our granny squares as normal, but these will be um, half treble granny square. So same thing, but just not as a treble. Let me just grab my wool and hope that it pulls for me because uh, it doesn't always in my nice tidy box. So I'm just gonna pause it here, set myself up with the new wool and we'll be ready to go. Okay, so let's get started. I've got my wool ready to go. Um, and I'm going to work. Oh, hang on. Everything's getting a bit mucky. Right. Get my wool into place. Make sure I'm anchoring properly. And just pull through. And then I'm just going to do a standing stitch to start. So I only need to do two on this one. So it just needs to be the height of a half treble. Just make sure it's all neatly in. Tuck that in. That's it. Much better. And then our oh, three half trebles. Chain two. Three more half trebles, and that's our corner cluster. My blanket is pulling my arms down, so I'm just going to just gather it up on my legs a little bit more. Okie dokie. Okay. Again, realign your wall. Um, I've been talking to a lot of students this week because we've had a lot of classes um, happening this week. And I always say that when you realign your wall to have your, your hook attached, but have your hook facing you and your hook facing out. That way you can just slit it between your thumb and your... Um, your palm here and then just realign your wall. It's a much more comfortable way to do it. 
We're not going to have chains in between the clusters. We're just going to skip the chain space here and then work directly into this chain space there, like, oh, like so. And you just skip every other chain space to create your cluster spaces. Right, let me just pull my wallet again. It's got knotted inside. I've hand um, spun it. Not hand spun it, that's the wrong word. I have, um, I can't think of the word. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> so miss one chain space and then work into the next. And that's basically what we're doing. So half treble, yarn over into the next chain space. So you're just going into every other one, like so. There you go. And then we'll go work the corresponding colour. So we've got how many rows to do this? We've got five rows. So we've got pink, then we've got white, and then we've got red, and then we've got, I think that's it. So I'm going to come back to you on those other colourways, but as long as you know that with your moss stitches, you skip the first one, work the next one, skip the first one, and so on. Okay? And then we'll come back to you.